Hi guys, so Boris Johnson's former chief advisor, Dominic Cummins, spoke for seven hours in, uh, in front of a parliamentary committee on Wednesday. Now, he said a lot of explosive things, but I want to focus here on the idea that he was not in charge and that he actually disagreed with Boris Johnson with how to deal with the pandemic. People all over Westminster exaggerated. Um, I think arguably they, they underestimated the influence that I had between July and December 2019. Uh, arguably, they massively exaggerated the influence that I had uh, af uh, uh, after the election. So that makes a lot of sense. So bef in the run up to 2019, and you can see here on the screen, he was the campaign director of Vote Leave. Boris Johnson knew that Dominic Cummins helped convince the public to vote for Brexit. He knew that he could use Dominic Cummins once again to convince the public to vote for the Tories, to vote for Boris Johnson. And that succeeded. So it does make sense that Dominic Cummins was very useful up to the, the moment that Boris Johnson won his majority. Now, what Dominic Cummins is suggesting here is that after he was his power or his um his influence over boris johnson dissipated there are two possible um arguments here one is yes he's telling the truth boris johnson got his majority boris johnson didn't need dominic cummins anymore boris johnson had his brexit deal uh, the oven ready deal he didn't need dominic cummins's uh, support anymore so Dominic Cummins, in a sense, was pushed to the back. But Dominic Cummins going forward would have made it would have made sense to keep Dominic Cummins on side because, well, you know, there is a pandemic here. We what do how do we deal with this? Dominic Cummins was able to convince the public to vote for Brexit. Dominic Cummins was able to convince the the public to vote for Boris Johnson, even though he's a compulsive pathological liar and the public didn't care about that so wouldn't it make sense to keep Dominic Cummins on board I can understand maybe immediately after winning the election there were probably thought thoughts within Boris Johnson's head yeah I don't need Dominic Cummins anymore but as soon as the pandemic arrived I don't think it's the case that Boris Johnson completely jettisoned Dominic Cummins um, the whole idea that I was the second most powerful person in the country and all of that, and I could just, you know, click my fingers and do this and do that and do the other, was just completely wrong. If I could, if I could have clicked my fingers and, and done things, there would have been a serious border policy. Masks would have been compulsory. Hancock would have been fired. We'd have done, you know, like dozens and dozens and dozens of things. What happened is, like, fundamentally, the Prime Minister and I did not agree about COVID. Now, this is where I have... A difficulty believing Dominic Cummins because Dominic Cummins said there he would have had a border policy he would have had masks being mandatory he would have fired uh, Matt Hancock probably the, the last one I'm pretty sure he would have been completely happy with doing but I, tr I don't believe him because of what he did in April that year he went north of England with his family uh, broke the rules you know, he understood, I don't, I, I struggle to believe that he didn't understand this. He understood by him doing that, he was undermining government policy. Probably second only to Boris Johnson breaking the rules. So he surely understood, if I do this, I'm going to be breaking the rules. I'm going to be seen breaking the rules. I'm going to undermine government policy. So if he truly believed in fighting the pandemic, he wouldn't have broken the rules. I don't believe for a moment that Dominic Cummins was on, on the side of good when it came to dealing with the pandemic and Boris Johnson was on the side of evil. Boris Johnson was completely indifferent to dealing with the pandemic. I think Dominic Cummins wanted to use uh, the tools that he had, manipulate the public into convincing them probably convincing them that there wasn't a pandemic, that there wasn't a problem. Um, 
that that is his way of thinking. He's not. So, I don't. He doesn't come across to me as someone who would actually say we need to protect the country. He helped deliver Brexit. He helped deliver Boris Johnson, who he later said was completely incompetent. If he truly cared about the country, he would have run a, a million miles from Boris Johnson. He understood Boris Johnson. I think what Dominic Cummins did was he used Boris Johnson as a vehicle to change Whitehall, to change government, to remove the civil servants that were exi the existing ones and put in his own people. He didn't care about the country. He didn't care about the pandemic. He didn't care about the things that he said here about a border policy or mask wearing or um, commandeering aircraft to, to go to China to pick up PPE. This is something he has, he's saying in hindsight. This is something he's used. This is, I believe, part of the manipulation. He wants to convince the public that he was on the right and Boris Johnson was in the wrong. And in some ways, he's succeeding. Now, I don't know whether he's actually telling the truth. My gut feeling is that this is part of his manipulation. Not that I'm defending Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson is completely incompetent. Boris Johnson should be nowhere near number 10. But there isn't a good guy and a bad guy here. I think we're dealing with two bad guys. We did not, not, not agree about COVID after March. After March, he thought the lesson to be learned is we shouldn't have done a lockdown, we should have focused on the economy, it was all a disaster, I should have been the mayor of Jaws. I thought that perspective was completely mad. I had very little influence on COVID stuff. I mean, I tried, I made arguments, but as you can see on all, pretty much all the major arguments, I basically lost, did not, did not win. So what he's suggesting, of course, is that he was the voice of reason in the room. He was the scientist in the movie saying, you need to do this. I don't believe for a moment that Dominic Cummins did that. Dominic Cummins attended SAGE meetings. He attended COBRA meetings as far as, well, SAGE meetings for sure. I think he also attended COBRA meetings. Um, he's suggesting, of course, that he had no influence. That, And it's very convenient to say, well, you know, things were a disaster. I had no influence over them. Do you think if things had been a success, that he would still be saying, I had no influence here? Or would he be saying, yes, I was the driving force in the room? What I therefore did in the summer was, I brought in Simon Case to be permanent secretary at number 10, because I thought the prime minister's not listened to me uh, on this whole subject. Uh, um, our relations are getting worse and worse. His girlfriend is desperate to get rid of me and um, all my team. If I bring in someone official to try to take over on COVID, that will A, make things better, and B, maybe he'll listen better to Simon Case than he will to me. So, and, and this would probably make sense, the, the idea of, look, there's a power struggle. There's, there are three people in this relationship. <laughs> there are, in this marriage, there is myself, there is Boris Johnson, and there is Carrie Simmons. And... Probably Carrie Simmons, no, I don't think this is related to COVID. I think this is related to the power struggle, the um, what was happening within number 10. Carrie Simmons is somewhat like a Dominic Cummins figure. She knows that she can manipulate the prime minister. She knows she, can, she has influence over him. She wants to bring in her own people, and we've seen that. So I think there was, um, a, comp there was a bit of a, a struggle there was a, a fight for the attention of the Prime Minister. Carrie Simmons had his ear and Dominic Cummins has his, had his ear. And Dominic Cummins feared that Carrie Simmons was more in control. She had, more, she had greater influence over Boris Johnson. And of course it came to a head last year at the end of the year where Dominic Cummins left number 10. So in summary, I think the Dominic Cummins is trying to create a picture of him being the hero, him being the scientist in the room, you know, when the aliens are arriving and the politicians don't know what to do or or making terrible suggestions. He he was the one, he was the voice of reason. When I don't think that's the case. I think Dominic Cummins probably along with Boris Johnson 
didn't believe this was going to be a, a disaster or they believed that it was going to be something that they could manipulate the public with. They could convince the public using the tools that they had to do something or to do nothing. That's my th take on it. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee. So why not check it out?